Hello everyone, this is another one of those, you know, not so much of a tutorial, but more like me saying, hey, did you know about this thing? And the thing, in this case, is the crown splash demon. And we're going to run through the use case and the basic parameters that it offers. But if you take a look at the teaser that I put out not too long ago, we can see the first splash is uh, without crown, and the second is a similar droplet falling down, but in that case I've augmented the sim with the crown splash demon. So let's jump into real flow and see how this thing ticks. It used to be that, you know, crown splash simulations was more or less a holy grail when I started using the software. There was a lot of tutorials on the matter with tweaking of a droplet for the best shape and then tweaking the forces to get the crown effect, but not. And then came the crown demon a couple of versions ago and things got so much easier. You've probably seen the effect countless of times, maybe even, maybe even without noticing. To me, I think I'm mainly associated with beauty products where you have kind of like a thin film of liquid spread out on a background plane and um, a product is animated into the frame and when it lands on the surface, a crown splash kicks up and surrounds the object. With the crown demon, you don't even have to make the object interact with the liquid. You can make some of these, you know, you could make stock crown splashes and just import them in your 3D app and lay out the scene, adjust the animation of the pack shot, and then match the splash. I mean, you could do it nicer, but I've certainly seen it used that way. It's really effective and a fast way to go about it if needed, if it's something you do a lot. Anyway, I have a basic Diverso sim in a box here. And I've used initial state to make it start in a somewhat settled state after sloshing around a bit. So feel free to check my separate video that I made recently on initial state if you're unsure what that entails. It should be available as a video suggestion in the top right corner as we speak. Let's grab a crown splash demon. And it's a little big for this scene, so I'm just going to scale it to size and submerge it into my liquid. It's a little confusing with the icon here, so I'm going to uncheck show icon. Should not make the new mistake of forgetting to connect this to the Diverso domain. And um, as the name suggests, you can see even more or less what to expect from the form by the way the gizmo looks. But let's keep the default settings and uh, just simulate pretty much and see what we get. It's worth mentioning while this is uh, simulating uh, that it only worked with the standard particles in the diverse domain. So don't even bother trying to connect this up to a hybrid oak because it would just be grayed out. It's not going to take that connection. So first things first, I just kind of thought I would leave the settings more or less as is for stutters, but I want to match it a little closer to the to the shape of the gizmo. So turning up the strength to 100 there. And now I think we're spot on. So off the bat, this is a really, it's really easy to see why it's called a crown demon. And it's also a very intriguing look, I have to say. And you know, the, the crown demon is more or less like a custom force field that you can art direct pretty freely. And the first thing I want to do is scroll down the parameter rollout and find the edit button. Now, as we recognize maybe from the uh, despline demon, the whole window frame is turned yellow. And it's worth noticing that uh, if you want to get out of this, you have to uncheck the button again. And it's worth noting that and doing that as a habit once you're done tweaking, because otherwise you might get into a situation where like, okay, I tweak the handles where I want them to be, but now I want to move the demon. But you can't move the demon because you're in edit mode. So try to remember that. First thing we notice is we can pull the handles of the individual spikes. And they are going to be constrained along the normal of the spike. So you can put it upward or downwards. And this is more or less going to be a multiplier of the strength. So if, you know, the simulation is fine generally, but one spike is too high, then you can just go into edit mode and pull down that individual spike instead, uh, rather than tweaking any parameter. We also have these control points for the main lip or the body. And we have four of those, one for each quadrant of the full circle, if you will. And it also has anchor points, so you can control the tangent of the lip. And if we pay attention to the base of the gizmo, you see we have corresponding handles there as well. So we can make the shape a little irregular if we want to, and we can also pull them inwards and outwards to make this whole thing, you know, control if it's going to 
fall outwards like a flower or if it's going to fall in on itself and kind of collapse on itself. I'm not really going for any specific look here. I just want to show you how easy it is to tweak and art direct this thing and then just simulate again and get the according result. So now you see we kind of made the whole thing kind of fall inwards instead, at least on on this axis. So we got a really irregular and kind of ugly shape in this case. Anyway, as far as parameters go, strength was pretty obvious. And uh, then we have creation time. And this is more or less when you want the effect to, uh, to kick into uh, action. And the parameters is in seconds. So let's say you want this to happen at frame five, for example. We'll pull up our trusty calculator here and note that if you go into options, my FPS or my frames per second for the scene is 30, which is the default if I remember correctly. I like to use 30. So five frame five divided by the frame rate is 0.16667, depending on how precise you want to be. So let's say 0.16667 and reset and sim again. So now we're going to see the first few frames are empty and then frame five is when this starts into action. And that's when exactly when the demon starts. So if you have a big body of water, maybe you don't really notice the effect until frame six or seven. So maybe you want to push that a frame earlier, bring up your calculator again and figure out what frame you should start on. Next up is the acting time. It's not something I play around with too much, but uh, worth noting and worth for you to uh, play around with by any means. So that's, I mean, if you got the right height, but you want more influence or longer influence, you keep affecting the simulation, then play with this parameter. So then we have surface tension, which is a big one. It's the same parameter that we have on the domain itself. And we have it on the demon itself, which is a separate thing. And I kind of like the demon because it has a icon that paints a pretty picture. And, um, you know, the higher the surface tension, the more tendency for bigger shapes of the fluid body to break apart into droplets and kind of contract away from, from the main liquid, like the droplets on the leaf in the icon. So we could play around with some of these settings. I don't know that we're going to get too much of a result, but I mean, let's, let's let this thing play out at the default value of 50 in surface tension and usually kind of the more uh, first of all you have to have enough resolution for this to to show and usually also the more kind of distinguished tendrils or spikes you have the easier it is to kind of get this thing to show up so let's settle for uh, that and just kind of play it back and maybe i'll do some editing magic and show these side by side somehow so let's add another hundred, not a thousand. Let's add another hundred on that value and simulate again and see if we can just from memory now, in my case, see any difference. I don't expect anything to happen here, but what about these big spikes? Maybe we'll see some kind of like droplets breaking off sometime soon. No? Yes? No? Anyway, I'm not going to focus too much on this now. Do play around with this yourself. It's, um, it's just something that could give a more detailed look and really just down to what kind of appearance you're after. So that's surface tension. Next up, we have the spikes count, which uh, pretty much just adds another handle to play with. So if you pay close attention to the demon, I'll add the number six. And you see now I have six spikes to play around with and tweak to my heart's content. And the next one is crown width, which is really important. So if I hide the domain again, comes into play especially when you raise the resolution of your sim. Often I come in here and lower the width because you see uh, the inner and outer radius here. That's the visual representation of how big the band of particles that are going to get affected by the demon is. So usually when you lower the resolution you can kind of get a bigger effect than you had before and it's tempting to lower the strength. But it's also worth noticing that when you raise the resolution, more particles get packed into this area and that leads to more liquid getting kicked up by the demon, in, in layman's terms at least. So it often 
makes sense to kind of come in and lower the crown with uh, because I do ultimately want that crown with to be to be pretty slim it kind of looks more natural to me I would say it gives a more detailed appearance maybe actually now that I have more a more selective kind of influence maybe that surface tension is actually starting to come into play see as it's starting to fall down and we get a lot of irregular shapes along the lip here regardless I'm not gonna bang my own drum but maybe maybe it's starting to to show more now it looks better by any means so you have no you don't have that big thick donut of liquid getting kicked up anymore you have a thinner band that it's gonna make more sense I think uh, so oftentimes, like I said, you raise the resolution, I think it's too big, I might be tempted to lower the strength, but oftentimes I come in and I lower the crown width instead, and ultimately get less of an effect and end up actually raising the strength instead. So that's kind of like a, depending on which way you go about it. So you see I went to point of 4 instead of point of 5, and that had a major influence. So now I might want to go and up the strength by like 50% to try and get to my to my previous aesthetic and last but not least there's also sheeter parameters and that's important uh, to notice uh, I might want to revisit that in a separate tutorial but let's say it can fill holes in the main body of the fluid it's a little abstract it basically creates new particles based on the settings you make here on a subframe level so pretty much the bigger the minimum cavity size is uh, the more holes are filled again very abstract I realize but it's the same settings as on the individual sheeter demon uh, which we have over here that is frequently used you'll see that being used in a lot of tutorials and it does exactly the same thing it can be really helpful for some looks so do play around with these and do select the attribute itself and um, use F1 to get the quick help and see the documentation of each parameter as you dial in these settings. But cavity size and then uh, the detection ratio is going to be the big ones. And the other ones, the thresholds and whatnot, are mainly fine tuning that I, at least personally, I rarely use myself. And uh, you know, that's really it, I think. I don't want to take up any more of your time than I have to. Uh, that's been the crown splash demon. I think you I hope you see how useful it can be It doesn't have to be like in a tank like this. It can be whenever you have let's say you have one of those like really art directed PBD sims with liquid flowing through the air without really uh, too much real-world connection and you just for some reason want you know kind of an impact thing Just try to stick a crown splash demon in there. It could be really could be really fun and as usual, I want to thank you for tuning in, and I hope you found the tutorial useful. useful. I would love for you to share the video, to, subs to have you as a subscriber if you want more of my content. And uh, let anyone know that uh, you think might be up for learning more about this type of thing. If you have any suggestions or issues with the video that I might be able to improve, then let me know first and foremost, either by commenting below or email me through davesplaining at gmail.com. Last but not least, I would love to see what you can come up with with these techniques. So, uh, either the one I've showed here or, or any of the other techniques that I have on my channel, I would love to see uh, what you have created. So feel free to tag or mention me on whatever social media you prefer. I'm showing the details on the screen as we speak. So that's it. Stay calm and keep simulating everyone. I'll see you in the next one. So take care.